The Boston Red Sox have won game one of the 100 World Series. They've now won five straight postseason games. The Red Sox bats remained hot in game two as they scored in the first inning for the second straight night. Swinging a high fly ball to deep right center field. Lemon's going back, back toward the triangle. It is off the side wall of the triangle, out by the door. Here comes Manny. Ortiz right behind him. Veritek to third. He slides in with a triple. And the Red Sox lead it two to nothing. Never was a concern for this team, but Schilling's ankle certainly was. When I woke up at seven o'clock this morning, I couldn't walk, I couldn't move. I honestly, God, did not think I was going to take the ball today. Didn't I didn't think I could. Schilling certainly has done it before. He did it last week against the Yankees, but this time it was more painful. This is like the movie Braveheart. I mean, this guy is a warrior, and that's why we brought Kurt Schilling here to help us get to our dream. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Yeah, job struck him out swing Schilling with the splitter. Schilling was indeed a warrior for the Boston Red Sox. I did what I did last time. I went to the Lord for, for help because I knew, again, I wasn't going to be able to do this myself. I just wish everybody on this planet could experience the day that I just experienced. It's just the most amazing day of my life. Boston now led two games to none, and as the series shifted to St. Louis, the focus of game three turned to Pedro. Game your life, baby. Game your life. Come on, baby. Let's go. Game time. Come on, let's go. Come on, Petey. Like you can, Petey. Like you can, baby. Come on. Martinez wouldn't need much run support this night, but he got some early from Ramirez. scored in the first inning in all three of these World Series games. And in this game, Manny also did it on defense. Catch, tagging and heading home. Walker, the throw, he is tagged out. Manny Ramirez, a first inning home run, and then he cuts Larry Walker down at the plate. And Pedro is vintage Pedro. Come on, Petey. Atta boy. He's a Hall of Famer. He's a competitor. He knows what he wants to do, and he wants to dominate. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Six strikeouts for Pedro. He retired the last 14. Pedro on center stage in the biggest game of his career in the World Series has answered the challenge. The St. Louis Cardinals were explosive all year. People said, oh, they were dead. You didn't see the, the real Cardinals. Let me tell you something. They were not dead. They ran a Shillian and Martinez. That's what makes you look dead. As game four commenced, Derek Lowe looked to continue Boston's trend of deadening the Cardinals' bats. 0-2 pitch. Here's a swing and a miss. He's out on strikes in a hurry. He is pitching with all kinds of confidence. Something the St. Louis pitchers seem to sorely lack. Well, gonna drive deep to right field. Way back it goes. Man, gone. Johnny Damon has led off the ball game with a home run. St. Louis Cardinals have never been ahead in this World Series. Base is loaded. Kicks and rips on 3 0. Way back! Way back! It's off the wall. Here comes Ortiz. Here comes Veritek. And it's 3 0 Boston. That was all the run support that Lowe would need as he sought to become the first pitcher in postseason history to win all three series clinching games. Swing and a miss. He made him look bad with that breaking ball, and Poole strikes out. Lowe has retired the last 12. Swung on and missed. He struck him out. He has pitched shutout baseball through seven innings. Like Schilling and Pedro before him, Lowe did not surrender an earned run. The fact of the matter is we just pitched lights out. We pitched that ball really well, and that's what allowed us to do what we did. The Red Sox are closing in on it. Closing in on it. Closing in on it. And Keith Folk comes in to try and close it. This wasn't simply a World Series save resting on Keith Folk's arm. This was salvation for a nation. After decade after decade after decade of tragic baseball losses, here are the Boston Red Sox on the precipice of a four-game sweep. Four-game sweep. Four-game sweep. Four-game sweep. Four sweep. Four sweep. Four sweep. Four sweep. With every pitch, 
The past, the painful past, the past that never ceased to be the present, was washed away. Fastball swung out and missed. He struck him out. Two out in the ninth inning here on the banks of the Mississippi River. The Red Sox are one out away from winning it all. Let's go, Red Sox! It has been 86 years since 1918. Generations have come and gone. 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 Edgar Renteria. The last chance for St. Louis to extend this game. When you get to that last out and you think you're going to win, you're almost trying to hold back, but it's hard to keep it inside because it is so emotional. You start breathing harder, your legs start shaking. I mean, you're about ready to erase a 86-year um, curse. Hope to the set. A 1-0 pitch. Here it is. Back to full. Red Sox fans have longed to hear it. The Boston Red Sox are world champions. For the first time in 86 years, the Red Sox have won baseball's world championship. Next year is finally here. Can you believe it? It's just a, a tremendous accomplishment for, for this team and the city. And 86 years of frustration is finally over. It was a thing that you dream of as a child for such a long period of time to be able to watch it unfold in front of your eyes and be able to run on the field and celebrate with your teammates after Folky got that last out. As soon as he hit it, I'm like, you got to catch this ball. You got to catch this ball. And I was actually a little, a little early on catching and almost missed it. But once I had it and you know, I kind of started to run towards first, and when I got rid of it, it's like, oh my god. And that last out was made. It's a feeling you can't, like you're world champions. It is the Red Sox who are the champions of the world. When I was running, you know, it was unbelievable feeling that I, I can't describe it, man. I was shaking and I couldn't believe it, you know, because everything went so fast. When you rush that mound and when you rush your, your teammates and you're hugging and the tears and the, it's, 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 it's what you work so hard for. I can say without any reservations that this is the happiest moment of my life just because of, uh, the collective goal had been reached. And now they can celebrate like idiots. That's what they've been waiting for all summer and for almost 100 years. They had fun. This team was a testimony to uh, playing baseball, winning baseball, when there's a looseness and relaxation about it. It was a team of players that liked each other, that respected each other, and wanted to win for each other. The team we have, it doesn't come around too often. A lot of teams, they uh, have their cliques, so they shy away from each other. But our team, once one person speaks, everybody listens. To the greatest Red Sox team ever. ever. These players haven't waited 86 years. They are aware of the burden that a lot of Boston players have played under with the constant reminders of how long it's been. If you wore a Red Sox uniform, that you've had to, you've had to bear so much of this burden for 86 years. You can go back to these great Red Sox teams, and there are a lot of great players who never have the joy of winning the World Series. Johnny Pesky. He's a Red Sox at heart. He's full uni every day. He's 80 something years old. That's the man that I was proud to give him a hug. And, you know, that was for him. Swing a ground ball stabbed by Polk. He has it. He underhands the first. And the Boston Red Sox are the world champions. When that last out was made, if I was 50 years younger, I'd have probably been jumping up and down like a crazy man. But that was probably one of the best feelings the Red Sox president could ever have. It's just as much for them. I mean, 
you wore that uniform, you know, you, you appreciate how much this championship means.